Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're uh, new to this channel, this channel is dedicated to uh, DIY, a lot of automotive, um, but getting in there, getting your hands dirty, and uh, there's nothing to it but to do it. Uh, this project here is that 95 Mustang in the back. Uh, it's a 3.8 V6. This is part three. Part one and two go through a lot of the differences. There are a lot more differences than I thought. All the research I did, a lot of people said these would just drop in um, they are not. There's, even if this motor didn't have to come apart and you got a good uh, salvage engine, you can't just drop it in. A lot of the sensors are different. Um, it, there's a bunch of differences, but check those other videos out to figure that out. Uh, so since the end of part two, what I've done that I didn't get on a video was I installed the timing chain cover and then I installed the uh, oil pan, which is pretty straightforward. Um, I talked down the time and chain cover and the water pump bolts actually 25 foot, foot pounds. And then uh, installed the oil pan. The oil pan you do use um, uh, gasket maker. They don't have a oil pan gasket. So I use the right stuff, this stuff right here. I've, th the first time I use this, I've never turned back. It's all I use now, it works, it works awesome. It, it hardens, it sets all the way through like this. Um, the little nozzle right here, I could take an awl and push that out and it'll come out one piece, like it's a mold, you know? So it, it fully sits. Uh, so the timing chain cover, putting that on was straightforward, the oil pan. One thing I'll note is if you're working on the specific engine, um, I know a lot of people get hung up on the bolts because they do make a difference where they go when you put them back. So first thing is I would really label them well when you take them off, that'll save you. But if you are in the position where it's like, uh-oh, uh I gotta put this thing back together and I got a handful of bolts. Here's the timing chain cover, studs. So this is the stud with the spin-on nut that goes at the bottom. And then the one where the, the nut's part of the stud goes up top. And then on the water pump, stud one, two, and then three, this lower one. These are the same. These are all the same length spin-on nuts. The one that's different is this guy here where the nuts part of the stud that goes on top on the driver's side and that's that has to go there if, if you had these reversed the power stand bracket would be cocked so that's one good way to check that you have them in the right spot and then this stud's clearly shorter with the spin on nut um, this bolt 10 millimeter bolt here uh, this is the shorter one that, that one's very obvious where it goes and then you got this one, two, and three that are, that are pretty obvious where they go. But this would be a good, sh a good shot. All right, so now that I got the oil pan on, I have a way of catching all the oil. So I've got the oil, the uh, lifters soaking. I'm gonna grab those and start uh, getting this valve train assembled. So here's the old lifters. What I like to do is just make sure that the, uh, the tray they're sitting in is still good. And so before I even take them out, I just basically lift them, see if I can just pull them out of the tray. That one just popped out. I mean, they're still soaked in oil too, but this tray's in good shape. So I'm gonna reuse it. Um, I'll pop all these out, clean the trays up. Here's the new lifters. I just dumped the oil out, but this was full to the top. These have been soaking. I like to soak them overnight. These have been soaking for probably three weeks. Uh, just life got in the way. So I'll clean these all up, take those out, clean, them, clean up the trays, pop these new lifters in, then I can drop them in. All right, I got these lifters uh, prepped, ready to install. I had them soaking. You want to soak them at least overnight. These have been soaking for a couple of weeks, actually. Trays took a break clean bath, then I blew them out. Uh, so these are all oiled, ready to go. Uh, the one thing I like to do as a sanity check is just tip this upside down and just make sure none of the lifters fall out, just so you know you don't have excessive wear in the tray. Uh, but I did that with both of these, they're good to go, so I'm ready to install them. All right, I got the lifters installed, got the trays in, and I got the uh, lifter hold down bolts torqued down. Uh, my next step's the uh, push rods. I'm gonna break clean those, blow those out, and put some molly on the ends, on both ends. Uh, the lifters are new, we're using the push rods and the uh, rockers, but it's just good practice. Put a little molly on those, and then uh, we'll install the rockers. 
All right, all the push rods are cleaned up. Took a brake clean bath, uh, blew them all out. Uh, like I said, I put assembly lube on the tip of every one and also on the other end into the lifter. Um, this side I have the rockers on. I'm gonna put the other rockers on and torque these down. But just something to think of when you pull these apart at the fulcrum, take those out, clean them really well and also put some as uh, assembly lube in there. Um, it's that first fire, if you don't get this oil up there, uh, you'll be you'll be glad for those first few seconds that you have uh, assembly lube in there. So I'll just uh, get the rest of the rockers on, torque those down, and then we'll be good to put the intake manifold on. All right, valve train's complete. Got all the rockers in, all torqued down. I rotated the engine, uh, watched the stroke. Everything looks good, no binding. So I think we're in good shape. Uh, the final torque on the rockers were uh, 25 foot-pounds. Uh, before I put the intake on, I think I'm going to do the uh, harmonic balancer, crank pulley, uh, just in case I need to see any of the uh, valve train while I'm doing that for uh, timing purposes. But it's keyed, should be no issue. But once the intake's on, uh, it'd be a pain to take it off. So I'm just going to do that first, and then I'm going to go back to the intake. All right, I got this balancer all cleaned up. Just a couple things to think about. You want to clean this inside bore as well as you can. We're going to put a light smear of uh, RTV on the crankshaft and this keyway mostly. The oil will wick inside that keyway and you'll get a, uh, a drip. So you want to clean that up well. And another thing you want to do is clean up your timing marks and actually mark it well. Uh, you'll thank yourself after. So this guy's ready to go, ready to be installed. I'm gonna use a uh, pulley installer tool, which is just a bolt, a uh, stud all the way through with a nut on the end of it to, to drive this on nice and square. All right, so got the balancer on, uh, no issues there. And as you can see, that key is still pointing up in my other videos when I was showing you how to get the to top dead center. And if you look on the timing mark that we made, the point is, I mean, it's dead on. So we're good there. I rotated the engine a couple of times. Everything still feels good. Time and marks line up. Uh, I'm ready to put the intake manifold on. All right, so here's our intakes. The left one's off the 95, the right one's off the 98. As you can see, there's, there's some differences. The, the water necks to start off with, I don't, it's the same body style. So I don't know if they change radiators or different style radiator hose, I'm not sure. But I'm going to have to swap this neck to here. Um, you have your heater hose takeoffs with your sensors. These are different. If you can see, this is a round connector. This has a post on it. This is an oval connector with another connector on this side, not a post. So my plan is just to take, take the necks off. That's easy enough to swap over. They'll do the thermostat at the same time on the 98. And then uh, take these two manifolds right off and put them on here. Uh, some other differences, you can't literally bolt this on to the 98 if you wanted to from the 95. This has 7 bolts, 14 bolts total. This has 6, uh, 12 total. Um, so they, they don't even line up to the heads. The heads are totally different in the 98. There's, there's more differences than similarities um, between these two engines. Uh, the most similar thing is the motor mounts will swap over, which the motor mounts are different, but they will bolt up and it will bolt into the car. But... There's, there's many differences. Um, so I'm just chipping away at it, seeing what I can reuse, what I have to reuse, making sure things are compatible. So far, so good. Uh, to be totally honest, the injection system is what's making me the most nervous and the, uh, the ECU driving them, but we're gonna see what happens. All right, I got the intake gaskets installed. Uh, these, these intake gaskets are pretty nice, actually. Um, the way they're toothed to fit into the, uh, the runner gaskets front and rear. I did still put a little dab in the corners of right stuff underneath. And then before I put this on, I laid down the runners and I put another little dab. So uh, that, that tooth actually fits right in with the right stuff. You can see it there. Uh, they're just prone to leaking right in these corners. Uh, but that's it. I'm going to drop the uh, intake and, and torque it down. All right, guys, playing a little catch up from where we uh, last left off. Uh, so I got the upper intake on. Um, got the valve covers on, put the oil pump on. That's pretty straightforward. I did fill it with oil uh, as high as I could go. I actually tilted this straight down so I could top it right off to help prime it. So the oil pump's on. I uh, put the cam sensor in, valve covers are on, 
And then I took the exhaust manifolds off the 95 with the engine mounts, transferred those over to the uh, 98. Those all bolted up, no problem. Both sides, those are done. Uh, the oil dipstick tube, the one that was in the 98 is O-ringed. The 95 is actually pressed in, but I was able to use the 95 as the 98 uh, broke when I was taking, taking it out. Uh, so this is where we stand right now. Looking pretty good, getting pretty close to dropping this in. Uh, right now I'm working on rebuilding the uh, injectors. I'm gonna make a separate uh, video on that also. All right, so here's the fuel rail. As you can see, I already got the injectors out. It's pretty straightforward. There's a horseshoe clip that holds these on. You can either pull them straight out or you can slide these clips off the injector. Uh, they sit right on here, right in the, the bottom side. Pop that out and then you can, you can wiggle the injector and get it right out. Um, I do have a injector shop kit that has all the new O-rings, uh, the pintle caps, and as you can see, the baskets. And just to give you an idea, I've got one of these apart right now, and this is the basket. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. So it did break, but as you can see, you can't see through that basket, the mesh. It's completely blanked over. Uh, this car was running. It was running rough. I mean, for many reasons. I had two spun rod bearings, but um, I'm not too sure if the fuel system was that great. Uh, just looking at this first um, basket that I got out. So, definitely worth reconditioning these while it's out, especially a car that's 30 years old. These are original injectors. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just take a pick, get the O-rings off. It's the bottom side. This is where the uh, basket sits inside of there. It is pressed in pretty tight, so it doesn't come out that easy. They actually have a tool where you drive the screw in and then you have an outside um, fitting that screws against this base plate and kind of presses them out. I don't have one of those, so I'll show you how I do it. So on the other side, take the O-ring off, this little uh, spacer. So now you got it stripped down. So now the next step is, uh, I just use a regular screw, sheet metal screw. It's just a little bit larger so that it will actually thread in. And then I'll thread this right in, try to keep it nice and square, and then put a pair of plies at the end of it. And I'll just wiggle it and walk it out. All right, so you can see there, I got the sheet metal screw in there. Uh, you don't want to thread too far down, but it's probably down a quarter of an inch. Um, the outside of that basket's just brass. It's soft, so it'll thread very easy. You'll get it down far enough, and then now you can uh, try to walk it out. All right, so I just got a small pair of channel locks. You don't want to pry too hard to each side because you'll actually strip your thread out. Um, so you just go nice and easy, back and forth. You'll see it start to move. I can actually see a little bit of fuel starting to come around the edges but nice and easy and there's your basket this one's actually in better shape than that first one i pulled out but that's that so this this injector strip down i'll hit it with the exterior with some brake clean clean it up and then i'm gonna shoot in there get uh any contaminants out that could be in there and then i'll hit the uh i'll hit the end here and that's it i'm gonna do this to all of them clean them all up and then we'll uh reassemble all right, so I got them all out. Like I said, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, you just really need the right screw size. You don't want it to go in so easy that you strip it out, but you don't want it to be so tough that you actually ruin this housing inside. So you want the right sheet metal screw, or you can buy the tool. The injector shop sells the tool, um, but they did come out pretty easy. I, I probably got to right where my fingernail is, and then I could feel the basket actually turn with the screw. You could hear it pop, and then I was just I just wiggled them out. Uh, some of them were actually broken. I don't know if it was from removal or if they were already cracked. So they weren't, weren't really doing anything in there. Um, and I only had one that was it looked like it was really blanked over. But get a misfire on that cylinder. So uh, next step is to give these a bath. Brake clean. That one over there is already done. But I'm going to clean these up uh, real good. Blow them out. And then uh, we'll reverse the process. And I'm also going to uh, hit this with some brake clean. And... Uh, clean these lines out should be this is all filtered fuel but this car has been sitting for some time so we'll flush that out also 
Okay, so these guys have all been brake cleaned. I blew them out after. Uh, we're ready to assemble, ready to get the baskets in. Uh, do yourself a favor, for one, clean your grubby hands. Uh, you could even wear gloves. Um, and two, just for a sanity check, make sure you just grab a light and look down inside because once that basket's in, whatever's there, it's, uh, it, it's gonna plug up your injector if there's any crud in there. So take a good little look, looks good. Um, so I'm just gonna grab a socket. You wanna size the socket to the base of the injector. So this guy fits perfect. I can hold it like that. Um, you wanna take a small ball peen hammer if you have a brass one even better, but you are hitting brass, so uh, you're not gonna do any damage. So you just wanna pop that in. You wanna get it as square as you can. And you just wanna make sure as you're tapping this in, you don't wanna tap it so far you start whacking the edge of this uh, injector, the actual uh, body of the injector, because you could do damage. So I'm gonna hold this injector square in the socket. I'm gonna get down low, make sure I'm tapping this in square. There we are, we're nice and flush. You could actually hear it when it made it up flush. You can see that. And that's it, so we got that basket in. It's nice and clean. We can put our O-ring on. I use a little bit of fuel on the outside of the O-ring when I install them. Uh, we get this washer on, get this other O-ring, and then your pintle cap. And that's that, so this guy's ready to be installed. So I'll finish the, uh, the other four injectors, and like I said, I'll take this rail, I'm gonna flush this rail out, and then I'm gonna install it on the manifold, but we'll be good to go. All right, so I got the fuel rail installed on the intake. And like I said before, I flushed this rail out with brake clean. I blew it all out. I lightly lubed up the O-rings top and bottom, uh, installed them onto the rail. All the injectors were on the rail. And then I lowered it on and then just lightly pressed them in and uh, they, they slid right in. It's all tied down to the manifold. So this is all good to go on to the next step. All right, kind of a bummer. I don't have a before and after, but I uh, got ahead of myself. I pushed the car outside, degreased the engine bay. Uh, came out pretty good. It's nothing worse than leaving it with all the oil and grease that was in there and then dropping this engine on top. And then you have seepage and you have drips in your driveway and you're thinking it's from your freshened up motor, but it's actually from the, uh, the motor that you removed. So you definitely want to get that nice and clean, which we did. So uh, ready on this end. All right, so as you can see, I have the engine on the cherry picker. There were a few more things I wanted to do before I stabbed this engine in, but I have to wait for the parts to come in, and they're not really that big of a deal to, to do in the, uh, in the engine bay inside the car. I want to get the thermostat in, I could do that. Upper intake's gonna get installed inside anyway. Uh, front accessory drive I left off, just so I don't have to fight around it to get to the uh, engine mount bolts. What else we got? The rear main seal I can now do now that it's not in the engine stand. Here's just a little, this is how I do it. There's probably a tool for this, but I just take the flex plate bolts and oversized washer, put a nut behind it to help press these one piece seals on. I put some right stuff on the outside. I lightly lube the inside and then you just want to start it square and it'll, it'll slide right in. You, you don't have to force it. You shouldn't force it. Uh, you don't want to damage the seal Obviously, this is uh, steel inside or aluminum, whatever they make this out of, it's metal, and then they wrap it in the, uh, the rubber. You don't want to dent it with these, these nuts, so nice and easy to push it in. Uh, they're almost impossible to get in with your thumbs, pushing them once it pops out. I mean, you could try. I still tried for the heck of it, but um, I've done a few of these, and this is how I always do it. So I'll get this complete. I'll get the flex plate on, and then I'm going to stab this engine in. I'll get it uh, bolted up to the bell housing. I'll get at least a couple of bolts in the bell housing. I'll get the, uh, the motor mount nuts on, probably won't tighten them up. And then I'll slide the car over to the, um, to the uh, lift so I can get it up in the air to actually get everything else tightened. But those are our next steps. All right, so the engine is in, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Like every time I, I jack up the uh, transmission to the tunnel as high as I can, 
and I put the engine in with the uh, flex plate pointing down, water, point, uh, water pump pointing up, just to get that angle before the uh, motor mounts hit their pedestals or the frame. So you don't have to drag the studs across the frame and you're, you're really fighting the frame and the motor mounts. Uh, if you get that angle, uh, nine out of 10 times, it'll, it'll kind of fall right in there. So no issues there. Um, it is just a V6, but unfortunately they didn't shift this drivetrain forward at all uh, with the extra clearance in the front. You just have more clearance over here. The firewall to the back of the block is still as tight as if it was a V8. So gonna battle all that, but so I have uh, four bell housing bolts in now. I'm going to work on shifting and getting the car over to the lift. And then I can uh, tighten up everything underneath. I'll do the bell housing bolts, torque converter bolts, uh, get everything I can from underneath, all the hardware, the heavy stuff. Same thing up front. I'll uh, get all the, the hard components before I start doing all the wiring so nothing's in my way. All right, guys. So as you can see, I got uh, way ahead of myself here from... The last clip, I uh, had a few hours. I had a four hour window where I was gonna be kid free. And so I just throttled down and got this thing back together. Um, one of the, some of the things I did, I did replace the alternator. I put a brand new alternator in, new water pump, new starter, uh, new plugs, new wires, uh, new air filter, obviously. Um, so all the, the common wear and tear while I had this thing apart, I did replace all those. Uh, so. I'm in a position now where I can fire it up and see what happens. But I did reference um, quite a bit the pictures I took before I removed the engine when I had it on the stand. I took a ton of pictures and I actually took a video with like in kind of slow mode, just like this, like just going around the engine, very slow. And then you can actually pause it and zoom in after. I did have to reference that because I took this engine out six months ago. Um, so. I definitely forgot where some things went, but I'm gonna try firing this thing up and uh, see what happens. All right, so the first fire was a success. Um, it sputted a couple of times, stalled, and then it actually just fired right up. Um, when it came down to an idle, it had a shake to it. I started chasing vacuum lines, um, thought it was possibly the injectors that we had reconditioned. Uh, long story long, long story short, what it ended up being is I had two wires crossed. So when I, when I wired this, the coil pack has one, two, three for the passenger side. So I did one, two, three, and I assumed I started with four. It would go four, five, six, but I just didn't look at the sticker on the... Uh, and the coil pack, if you can see that, it actually goes four, six, five. So I ended up crossing those two wires uh, accidentally. When I put them back where they needed to go, it smoothed right out. I let it come up to temp, um, tried to burp the radiator the best I could. Uh, everything looks good. I think I got most of the air out of it. Put the cap on, I took it around the block and then uh, I just parked it here. I'm gonna let it cool down tomorrow morning. I'll top off the coolant and then take it for a good ride but so far so good uh, it's nice and quiet it's really quiet um we'll see what happens i'll uh, send some updates but i think i'm going to close this video out um with the uh with the with the full rebuild here getting it fired and i'll do a review video after i uh get some miles on this thing see what happens hopefully it doesn't start knocking like a like a diesel after a few miles but I have, I have high hopes in it. We'll, we'll see what happens. But if, uh, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, please consider uh, subscribing and liking this video. It helped me out tremendously. And I'll uh, see you in the next one.